Hi everybody. Yeah. Okay. Hi everybody. Uh, so uh, let's start with our one o'clock session. And uh, for this session, we have uh, uh, Ian M. Lewis, uh, who will be talking about the uh, Luigi, the friendly pipeline plumber. So a short introduction about Ian is uh, he is currently a web developer at Be Proud Inc. Um, He's uh, also a founding member and board member for the PyCon JP and also very active in Python uh, community building in Japan. Uh, he also is currently the lead developer for Compass, uh, which is a service for building developer communities through events. Uh, so just to add a side note that uh, I and myself and the rest of the community have been working hard uh, to get uh, PyCon APEC going this year. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of uh, your, your conference days today. Right, Ian? All right, thank you. So uh, like you said, my name's Ian Lewis, and I'm going to be talking about Luigi, which is a, it's a new tool that uh, was written by some folks at Spotify. Uh, I haven't actually, uh, it's not something that I'm writing personally, and I don't really have any uh, association with the folks at Spotify, but I thought it was a really cool tool, and uh, so I kind of wanted to uh, share it with all you guys today. So one of the, uh, so, what is Luigi basically? Like it's just a, like a batch processing uh, system that uh, you know, it handles a lot of things like dependency management, uh, complex pipelines, those type visualization, those type of things that uh, you don't really want to do yourself. And it does it in, you know, it's a fairly simple thing, but it's, uh, it works really well and it does a lot of things that you don't want to have to do yourself. So a quick introduction about myself, uh, like, like I, uh, Iqbal said, like, I'm, my name is Ian Lewis, and I work at Be Proud here in Tokyo. And uh, we do all of our, our uh, development in the Python language. And uh, I also make uh, Compass, which is the, uh, the site that, we, uh, that everybody used to register for uh, PyCon APAC. And uh, I also do other stuff, like I'll uh, uh, publish these slides later so that you can click on these links. But they're basically my Bitbucket and uh, GitHub profiles. So. Um, so more in depth, what is Luigi? Um, well, I, I think everybody knows the name Luigi. Like, I'm not sure that anybody probably doesn't uh, know what it is. But, um, so, but for, for copyright reasons, I'm not going to be uh, showing you what that is. You know? <laughs> the, uh, but essentially, Luigi is, you can, you can guess that Luigi is, the name, is, the, is a common name for a plumber, right? So, so this, uh, this is a system that makes pipelines. So we, uh, so the plumber and uh, name is pretty apt. So, um, yeah. So just imagine your favorite video game plumber here. So, um, so more in depth look at what Luigi really is. Like Luigi is a, is a framework for doing batch processing. So you can uh, do like really small, like kind of local batches or relatively small batches, and or you can do really large batches, like say like uh, Hadoop. Uh, you know, a Hadoop job, which depends on a Hadoop job, which depends on three Hadoop jobs, or, you know, you can, you can get as complex as you like and big as you like. Uh, it, it's, a, it's kind of similar to a lot of other tools, like um, PIG or, uh, or some of the other, uh, like, big data kind of tools, but it doesn't really replace things like, like Hive or PIG. Um, those are kind of things that you can... Uh, these are, those are type of systems that you could use as tasks within your pipeline, but um, what Luigi does is actually stitch all those little tasks together into a pipeline that, uh, and makes it easy to do that type of thing. Um, so it's, and it's good for uh, batch processing, but it's not really great for, it, it's not designed for uh, like real-time type of uh, stuff. So like streaming, uh, like say if you want to stream like log files or like just regular log data, you might use something like FluentD or whatever. Or like if you want to do more uh, complex real-time workflows, you might use um, something like Storm. Uh, but Luigi is basically not really for those kind of uh, applications. It's for batch processing. So the other thing about Luigi that's really nice is it's Python, right? So you can write all of your tasks in Python. Uh, so you, you write all of your logic in Python, you write your Hadoop job, you can write Hadoop jobs in Python, you can access like HDFS, like uh, files in Python, you can, uh, so everything is, can be done in Python and you don't really have to like 
worry about like writing your Hadoop jobs in Java and the rest of this stuff in Python because you hate Java and like <laughs> stuff like that. So <laughs> you can just write everything in Python and not really have to worry about it. Luigi just kind of takes care of it for you. So um, first, I want to like go over some concepts, right? So um, Luigi has a couple concepts that you like, and these are like kind of English concepts, but or these are English words, but you might not understand what they are based on uh, just just by knowing this word. So one of these is a target. So like in Luigi, you have this concept of a target, which is essentially like in your pipeline, you have like a number of tasks, right? And so like each target is going to be like kind of a snapshot or a uh, a marker or something like that in between each task that tells you that this task is finished or it's, it might be the output of that task, but it, it's something that, that you can use as a starting point for, or uh, is it basically a, f a starting or a finishing point for a task. Uh, the next is obviously a task, like most people would understand what this is, but this is basically the logic that you uh, have for each uh, part of your pipeline. And uh, this, th that'll contain the main logic and also you have these parameters. And the parameters are kind of interesting. I'll talk a little bit more about them later. But parameters are kind of something that you attach to your task, which uh, it's like uh, the arguments to a function. You can, you can pass these uh, arguments into your task, and the task can, uh, you can alter the way that the task works based on the parameters. So you might tell it how long, how much work you want to do, or uh, that sort of thing. So you want to do like a month's worth of work, or like, um, or just a day's worth of work or something like that. You can specify those in parameters. And so what you'll end up having is like this like kind of flow, right? You have this like input here that goes to a task and an output uh, which uh, might write to a target. And this input might also be a target, but it might, it might be just like some data that you get from somewhere. But most likely it would be like some sort of target. And so like, what you can do is you can take this task's output from the target, and then you can add it or input it to the task to, to your next task to, like, to help form your pipeline. So like, you know, if you imagine this, this kind of uh, the last target here being the first target here, you can like, have this long chain of stuff, which essentially like, just you know, illustrates what a pipeline is. So, right? like, so it's, a, it's a pipe, right? It's a pipe of, of, you know, where you push data through this pipe, right? And so you can get really complex pipes or pipelines, right? So you can get complex stuff. So like, so like this looks pretty like out of whack. So like you might get like really complex stuff, and it like if you have complex stuff, that's just going to break, right? So you're going to have like leaky pipes, right? So like your pipes are going to break. They're going to like you're going to have stuff like failing halfway through. You know, like you're going to have problems with that, and like so you might have like. You know, if a complex pipeline, you have, like, might have like really bad problems. Like maybe not quite as bad as this, but you might have like a uh, pretty bad uh, problem. So like, what happens like when your pipeline fails like halfway through? And Luigi like makes that a little bit of difference. So like, or has has some features and that are built into the way that the framework works, so that you can uh, handle tasks uh, more easily. And I'll kind of talk about like what each of those uh, the part. The, the aspects of, of Luigi that make it easy to, to recover and to... So, um, generally, like, what it does is it, it makes it so that tasks can be easily restarted, like, or the pipeline can be easily restarted, like, partway through. You don't have to, like, start from the very beginning again and, like, run all of your, you know, like, over a terabyte of data again. You know, you can start from where you left off. And part of that is, is uh, achieved by... Uh, the targets that I mentioned earlier, and by atomic file operations. So Luigi provides a, an API that uh, allows you to um, <clears throat> like do atomic file operations. So like when you're running a task and you're like writing some data out to a file, um, say like your task like fails halfway through, like it breaks, right? And so you might if you weren't doing this kind of, or if you didn't have this abstraction, your, your data might be like partially written out. So like you don't, when you try to redo that task again, you don't know like where it broke or if it broke or uh, you know, you don't really know like how you can restart. I mean, you can kind of throw that data away and start over and like run it again. But like, you know, if you're, 
if your pipeline is like doing lots of different things, like you wouldn't really know like how you can restart or like um, where like how much data from where you need to restart. And so um, with the local file abstractions and the HDFS abstractions, what it does is it it writes out to like temporary files, and then when actually that file is closed, when it's all uh, finished, the uh, the file is moved into the right place, so that you don't have like uh, partial files like laying around. And so it it makes it easy to, to work with because what you can do is like when a task is finished, the output files are 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 created, and so the output files for that particular task are. Uh, are there, so you know that that task is finished. And so you can restart your pipeline from that spot and then use that input for your next task. So like, um, if something breaks in between, you can just restart the whole, uh, the whole pipeline and it'll just kind of start off where it left off. So another thing that, uh, that I wanna talk about that, that Luigi does is it handles dependencies and um, in a pipeline, you might have like a lot of tasks kind of uh, running in parallel. So, uh, and actually, like one of the things that makes Luigi great is that you can you can run a lot of tasks in parallel. And so you can have like, like say if you want to run uh, a, over a, like a month's worth of data, you can break that data into like uh, each day's worth, uh, like a day's worth of data, and then process that and the next day's worth of data and process that like all in parallel and then at the very end like aggregate that data into uh, whatever result that you need. So you don't have to like sequentially move over this huge like file or something like that. So you can like do that and then like uh, so that the final aggregate uh, task you can have that depend on all of your on your task that you have for each day and so like you can and only when that, all of those tasks are finished is the aggregate task run. And you can have like, you know, really simple dependencies or you can have really complex dependencies. It really doesn't matter, like, like Luigi doesn't really care. It can kind of just handle those. So like Spotify apparently runs about like, uh, uses Luigi to run thousands and thousands of tasks a day. And like, and some of the pipelines have thousands of tasks in them. So another thing that I want to talk about is connections. So like I mentioned that the tasks can be dependent on each other, right? So one of the things that's really neat about the, uh, the tasks being dependent on each other is that, and the way that Luigi kind of like frames this whole idea is that when you have a task that's run and it has output, like you can use that output by default as the input for your next task. So you don't really have to like worry about, uh, you know, getting the output from this task and piping it into the, the input for this task and like, you know, putting all, doing all that glue stuff, glue code, it like kind of does a lot of stuff for you uh, by default. So you can override a lot of this functionality, but you can also, but by default, it just kind of like takes the output from one file, from one task and like, you know, uses it as input for the next task. And generally what you do with each task is you write out some sort of file to like HDFS or like a local file or something. And so um, you'll just write out that file and then the next task when it starts up, it'll take that file and process it. And so another thing that's really, uh, I mentioned HDFS, but like one of the things that's also really neat about it, uh, Luigi is that it supports Hadoop uh, and and the HDFS. So you can, uh, as a single task in your pipeline, you can have a, you can run a Hadoop job. Uh, so you could have like say just a regular Python script that runs and then like after that you run a Hadoop job and then after that you run another Python script or you run some other kind of like, you know, processing. I mean, it, you can do pretty much anything you can, you can do with a regular uh, Python application. So. Um, but what's cool is that like Luigi isn't really uh, bound to Hadoop. Like it's, it doesn't run everything in Hadoop, right? So like it doesn't have to. You don't have to have Hadoop to run Luigi, right? So like it's a. Uh, but it's like you can use Hadoop uh, to as a as one of your tasks. So like, and that's like provided within the framework. So like you don't have to really uh, implement that. But you could also like just as easily like create something like for another type of MapReduce uh, uh, 
framework or something like that if you have one like at your, at your company. So um, the next thing I want to like mention is that Luigi uh, is distributed. So you can run Luigi, but you don't have to run it like just on a regular like one single machine. You can run it on like a cluster of machines or like several machines if you want to. And um, it's not like uh, super resilient. Like it doesn't have, it's not like Zookeeper or something like that where like it, uh, it has like multi-master and all this stuff like that. Like it has, it has a single scheduler server, which is like, you might think is like a single point of failure, but like, you know, in batch processing, you don't really have to think about that too much. Like um, it's usually kind of offline processing. So what they, they just have a single scheduler server and then like uh, that schedules all the tasks at the, for the individual workers and make sure that like workers aren't running the same task on different machines or something like that. And so, like, and the scheduler is also, like, it's just pretty neat. Like, you can also run the, uh, run Luigi with, the, like, a local scheduler option and without, so you don't have to actually start up the scheduler server. You can just run it, like, for development or something like that. You can just run it locally. And the other thing that's really cool about the scheduler is that it includes a uh, visualization tool. So this is actually kind of, like, a little bit goofy. Like, you can't really see it here, but, like, these are all these all these like little nodes in the in this tree here. You, you probably can't see the lines, but like all, these are all connected, and like the these are all tasks that are dependent on each other. And then there's a single task at the top, and so like this will actually you can visualize the the dependency tree here, and it also tells you uh, like the state of the tasks, like uh, whether they're pending, whether they're running, uh, whether they executed. Uh, successfully, whether there's some sort of error. Um, and you can also kind of see from here that, like, if you mouse over it, you'll see, like, a little pop-up that says, like, what the input parameters were for that task. So, next thing I'm going to talk about is actually, like, how do we write tasks? Like, so, how, like, I talked a lot about how, how the tasks are what you can do with Luigi and what its features are and stuff like that. But actually, how do you write a task in Luigi? Um, so one of the things that, I, the first thing I want to talk about is like, uh, that you, you basically write a task by extending the Luigi task uh, class. So they provide like a, a kind of an abstract base class kind of thing that you extend to uh, create a task. And then, so, and it, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it has like a meta class that it uses to like parse these parameters or look at the parameters and stuff like that when it creates this task. But it'll, uh, you can pres uh, pass these parameters here. So like this is a date interval parameter and also a int parameter. So like you can have two specific, or here I, I've specified two parameters that go into this task. And when you run the task in a Luigi, you can start the you can actually specify these parameters on the command line. Um, they come as like little like optional command or optional arguments to your uh, to the command line. And you can also feel like I, I didn't mention it, but you can also when you uh, specify the the requirements, you can specify you uh, you can pass these uh, parameters in code to the uh, to the task when you create it. So the next thing is like. Uh, requires, right? So like here you specify like which task are the dependent tasks. So you can either, you can return here a, a single task object or you can return a list of tasks. And um, so here I'm saying that like I have for every date in the date interval uh, that, I, that I'm running over for this, this particular uh, pipeline or for this particular task, uh, I want to create a, a dependent task that uh, that runs for that particular date. So you might like, want to present like process, uh, you know, one day's worth of log files or something like that. And then all of these like requires based on their these uh, returned tasks, based on their dependencies, like the dependent items will be created, will be run, and but all of these tasks will finish before the task that I'm defining here will be will be run. And also one thing that I should note is that uh, Luigi when you see here that you're creating like a Python object. And uh, so you might think that like uh, the tasks 
like if you're creating a bunch of different task objects, how does it know that the uh, that this task is the same as this task, and it shouldn't run them both, you know, like or run the same task in, in different places or over over and over again or something? Well, so Luigi, what it does is it uses these parameters, and for this like aggregate argist, argist is the the name of the task, but for this task, you might uh, it takes the interval in this, this sum val, and if you pass the same parameters into the, into the task, it will return you the exact same object every time. So like, if you pass different, uh, different parameters here, it'll create a new task. But if you pass the same parameters, it'll give you the same task that it, uh, from, the, like, from the schedule server with an ID from that. So like, you can know that it's been run or not. So, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, the output. So here we specify the uh, output, which is uh, just the target file. This is the, and I mentioned the target is the abstraction that, that Luigi provides for, uh, for abstracting lo local and uh, HDFS files. And so here I'm specifying the output, and you can pass, like return a list or uh, or a single target file here, or a target object here. And so I mentioned before that like uh, Luigi does these connections, so it passes the output from one task uh, as uh, by default is the input for another task. And so you can, um, so here is actually where you specify the output. So Luigi will like, by calling this method, will know what this task should output. and it can, by, by default, it'll check to see if this output has is ac is actually been created to, in order to figure out whether the task has been finished or not. And you can override that like, com like functionality to check like, how do you know like, that the task is finished. But by default, it'll actually like, just check to see if the file exists. So I'm not sure if like, this might be a little bit small, but the, uh, the task implementation uh, is um, you write that in a run method in, in the task. So the task uh, has a run method and you just go through here and uh, do your, your processing. And so one thing to note here is that like, it, it calls this like, self input uh, method, which is uh, by default the implementation of that is to take the input from all the dependent tasks. So you can take that as a list from the dependent tasks and then process all of those. So here it's aggregating the input from some dependent tasks, uh, opening all those files and counting how many times that a particular artist was played or something. So this is, this is actually like a, a Spotify, uh, Spotify themed example here. So the next thing I want to talk about is like uh, that when you run MapReduce tasks, like if you run a MapReduce task, uh, or MapReduce, like people know that you have to implement a mapper and a reducer, or you have to implement uh, those, those two uh, parts of the, the algorithm separately. And in here, you actually just run, create a run method. So like uh, for MapReduce tasks, you have, to do a you have to implement them slightly differently. And um, here, what we're doing is the exact same thing. We're just uh, Processing each line in the in the mapper func in the mapper method, and then um, in the reducer method, we're just summing up the, the values that that get returned by the mapper method here. So I'm a little bit fast, but we'll s I kind of want to do a demo here of like of Luigi, which is going to be fun. So. Let me quit this first. Okay, so I created this demo, um, which is I put up on GitHub, and it's it's basically like it's a vagrant box that uh, actually let me do this. So here I use Chef and Vagrant to like create a uh, just a v, uh, to allow somebody to create a VM that. Uh, that'll install Luigi and MapReduce and, or Hadoop and all that stuff. Like, uh, so you don't really have to, you can kind of play with Luigi without having to get too involved in it. So what I'm gonna do here is just start up Vagrant. Start up my 
VM. Hopefully this won't take too long. And then what I'm going to do is just like run a couple, uh, couple jobs so that you can kind of see how, how uh, Luigi works. So one of the things, the things that I want to show you is um, I'm going to do a, uh, just a regular uh, job that includes a MapReduce task. And I'm also going to show you like how to run uh, Luigi locally so that you don't really, because you don't really have to run it uh, using MapReduce or like using a scheduler or anything. You can just run it locally. So I'm going to, and I've actually installed everything in the VM already. So like Chef will, the execution of Chef will be really, uh, really fast, but, um, or it should be. But um, the, when you run this the first time, like it'll install Hadoop and stuff. So it'll take a long time. So just be wary of that. Okay, so like I've started up my, my Vagrant box here. So my particular uh, demo uh, will install stuff in the mount directory. And so it, it has a, a local share. So in here you, uh, you can see like there's some data, a data directory and a bin directory. And in, here, in the bin directory I have some, uh, these, are, these are examples uh, that, most of these are examples from Spotify, but one's actually the one that I created. Um, and the, actually the data directory like shouldn't have anything in it right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a, uh, a task here, and one of them is actually word count. This is like a really like simple kind of word count thing. Actually, let me check this. I might actually not have the word count file that I want. Yeah. Well, I, let me do this instead. Actually, yeah, let me not do this demo. Let me do the Hadoop one, actually. But you can do this one, like, you can run uh, Luigi locally. This is a, uh, this is actually the command line that you would use. So, like, Luigi, like, you can have, uh, you create your own Python file, which, like, has all the tasks and stuff in it. And then, as a main method to that, to this guy, you can call uh, Luigi run, which is, like, just the, the way to call the Luigi runtime. And then after that, you pass the task name and like uh, any parameters that go to that that particular task. And then like here, you can say like local scheduler to uh, to actually like run that locally without the the remote scheduler. So the other one that I wanted to do was the top ten artists one. And this is actually. This one actually should run. So we have a top 10 artists uh, example. And this guy, we're passing in a, uh, we're specifying this top 10 artists uh, task. And like this uh, in date interval, which is just basically two days. Well, actually, this is a week. Let me do just two days. Let me just get this to seven. And then we'll just do two days. And here, like we just say, like you can run this locally or with Hadoop, this particular example. So like I'm passing a Hadoop thing. And you can also uh, Hadoop option. And also you can uh, run it with multiple workers locally. So uh, here I'm passing, telling it to use uh, three workers. And so if I run this, I, I actually have uh, the scheduler has a, has a visualization tool. So this is. This will show you the pending tasks and running tasks and which ones are done and stuff like that. And when the tasks are executing or when they've been uh, scheduled, you can kind of see here, uh, you, can click, you can click into them and uh, see the dependencies or the, the, the dependency graph. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. Uh, so this is like checking all of, if all the tasks are, are running right now. And so now in the, the 
the tool, I can see that some of these tasks have been scheduled already. So I'll go and look at the dependency graph. And actually, right here, it's only running, or it's only got one here. Ah, maybe I made the, uh, the uh, date interval too, uh, too narrow. But it's actually running, it'll run this task. So if I made the date range larger, it would like make a bunch of like tasks down here. And then those would all be, this one would depend on all of those tasks. And this one actually runs a, a Hadoop job. So if you look at the output here, uh, you should be able to see that when it actually runs it. Okay, so here it's like starting, starting to run the Hadoop stuff. Okay, so let's see if it ran. <laughs> it doesn't look like it did, but that might actually be good because we can see. Okay, so the Hadoop task actually ran, but the, uh, the aggregate task failed. So that's a good example of like seeing how, seeing the different uh, statuses of the task. So this one you can see that, that it failed. And if actually an earlier one failed, then it would stop the pipeline there and then like you could either fix it or like restart it. And also, uh, uh, um, Luigi will, let me see if I can find the output here. Luigi uses uh, Mechanize to, uh, to get the output of the uh, MapReduce, so from Hadoop. So like you can see like a lot of uh, output here from, from the MapReduce job that you wouldn't normally be able to see unless you were using something like Mechanize. Um, there might actually be some better ways to do that, um, getting some API, or like, uh, there's like an API for, for Hadoop to get that sort of stuff, but like, Luigi just uses Mechanize to get that, and so, um, all right. So let's like actually run this uh, with a little bit bigger date interval, so we can see like that a little bit. So if we run this bigger, with a bigger data interval, we're gonna run this exact same thing over again, right? Ah, if I run this one. All right. So here we should see like several tasks that are dependent, that this aggregate task depends on. As you can see, like the two are running right now, and one's actually already finished, because I ran it in the last time. So like the output's already there, it just, so it doesn't have to run anything. It just kind of like says, oh, hey, I'm done. And then it runs these two ones. And actually I have three workers running, but one of them's idle because there's no any tasks to run. It's just, I only have two tasks that I can run right now. So it only runs two on the, on the three workers. And then when these are finished, it'll actually, when both of these finish, it'll actually run the Hadoop job again. Okay. So both of these are finished and it's actually running the Hadoop job. So we should be able to see that here. Yeah, lots of MapReduce garbage coming out here. One thing that's kind of funny about the Spotify uh, example is that like this stream HDFS just creates a bunch of random garbage that it then aggregates later. Which, was, which I thought was kind of interesting. Okay, so it looks like it's finished here. Yeah, and it just crapped out again. But then you can see, kind of see like a, more, like a slightly more complex uh, dependency graph. Um, so one of the, uh, let me do this again. Whoa. Okay. This guy's not responding to me here. Darn it. <laughs> well. No, I don't want to cancel that. All right. So one of the, uh, another demo that I had was that, uh, was a log aggregation one. And this one's actually like kind of, uh, it's one that I wrote um, that aggregates some log files. Like they're just, 
nginx log files like with a common logging format. So like it does some pretty dumb stuff here. Like normally you would take like log files and like put them in a little bit more uh, nicer format. But this the format that this one takes is like a bunch of uh, just a regular local log file that's been gzipped and like then like rolled over using like the the um, what is it log rotate. So like you it, you get files like something, something, zero, something, something, one, right? So actually, like, let's, if you look at it, so, so, like, you get a bunch of files, like, like this, that look like, they have, like, these .gz files on the end, and, like, so it's just a bunch of numbers, so like it actually gets a little bit complicated. So you would you would probably make these make your logs a little bit uh, easier to read before you actually put it into a system like this. But I'm just kind of doing a really dumb kind of thing. So like here I'm just going to like run this on like a few days worth of data, or actually no, it's this command. So I'm going to run, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to process these log files and then I'm going to like look at the status and then aggregate each one of the statuses into a, uh, so that I know like how many times that like I get a 500 error or like a 404 or something like that. So I'm just going to run this in like two days. Ah. Yay, live demos. Okay, yeah. So now if I run this again, it should actually run this time. So like right there, like I had run the, pre the demo previously, but I forgot to delete the, the output file, so it thought that it was done. So here, if you look at my dependency graph, what I'm doing here is just like loading in my gzipped log files uh, and each one of these is loading a single log file, like log rotated log file. So here you can see file num is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 1, 2, 3. And then at the end, it's going to split, take the data that was outputted that, from that and split it by date. And it's going to process two days worth of data. And then at the end of that, aggregate that. So this is a little bit more uh, complex uh, pipeline. And this one actually takes a little bit longer because I'm running this on a in a vagrant box on my lowly MacBook Pro that's several years old. Actually, should have done a few less days. But you can kind of see, like, that's the kind of things that you can do with uh, Luigi. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of let this run while, I'm, uh, while I take some questions. So that's all I have for uh, about Luigi. So if you, if anybody has any questions, like I can take those now. There's a microphone over here. So. Hi. So uh, see, I hadn't heard of Luigi before, but right, um, it's a, it's a really new tool. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, but so uh, like for our background processing, we use Celery. Yeah, and, um, and so if I, if we abstract it away from the underlying Hadoop or like the technical implementations about it, what sets it apart? How how does it different from uh, using Celery? Or like, why would I want to? Why when would I need to use something like Luigi over, say, Celery? Um, I don't know. I, I guess it would be like um, you would want to use something like. Uh, like Luigi, if you were dealing with a lot of like kind of um, with 
fairly large and maybe like interconnected data. So like, like at Spotify, I think that they, what they use it for is they use it to like look at how many file or how many tracks were played and like what artists are, were there and like, you know, what album is it and stuff like that. So they have a lot of interconnected tasks that like depend, that have like uh, various dependencies. So for something like that, I think that Luigi would work really well. Um, another thing is that like for Celery, Celery just kind of like does the parallelization part for you. Like it, it just, um, but um, with Luigi, it would give you a lot of other stuff like uh, being able to like restart them halfway through. Like say if like you have some tasks that you're running in Celery and then like, you know, half of them break. Like how, how do you like restart your, your, your background processing? Like that might be something that's, that's a, like, might be a little bit easier with Luigi, I think. Um, also, let's see. Yeah, just like the integration, like with with uh, Hadoop and things like that, would also be like uh, pretty pretty nice with Luigi. Um, plus, like you get some visualization tools about how it's how it's uh, processing and how how it's working and which tasks are broken and that sort of thing. So, does that answer your question? All right. Any other questions? Maybe you, okay. You could uh, refresh to see if it's done. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Oh yes it is. Oh, nice. Yay, all right, so like, yeah, it just can, like, gives you a bunch of like, guard, like output <laughs> that you can Check later, see if like it ran or whatever. So Luigi detects now uh, if each file is down, uh, each task is down or not uh, based on the target right. file, right? Right. So by if, default, it does. Yeah. So if I delete some target file, right. then it detects it. I detect, uh, I delete target file, then restart the task. Then it will find out which file is missing. Then restart right. that task again. Right, so what I did like just, just at the end like with my little demo fail was that I, uh, I had run it earlier to test that it was working and then like it outputted all the output files and so like uh, when I ran it again, it was like, oh, I'm done. Like I don't have to do anything. So I was like, that's not much of a demo. So what I did was I, I just deleted all the files and, and then restarted it. So like I did exactly what, what you're saying. Okay, so, good. thank you. Anybody else? I think it's yeah. all right. Okay, then. Uh, so let's finish. Right. Yeah. So thank you, and yeah. uh, you can you can see the little. Uh, you can actually go and check out Luigi on GitHub. Uh, they have Spotify has like their own uh, their own group or whatever that they uh, and in that you can find the the Luigi repository. Um, for the demo, like you can check out my GitHub. Uh, I'll actually uh, publish these slides later, but um, you can check out my GitHub, which is Ian Lewis, and in there there's a Luigi demo, which you can use to uh, check out Luigi. And uh, my Twitter is, is Ian M. Lewis, and uh, I'm on GitHub and at www.ianlewis.org uh, also, if you want to check out my blog and stuff like that. So, All right, well, thank you.